You're listening to Radio Kidnappers, the voice of Hawke's Bay. This is a program called Acupuncture On Air, and it's our pleasure, as always, to have in the studio Heiko from the Acupuncture Clinic in Hastings. How are you going, Heiko? I'm very good, Ken, and I've noticed that you're even wearing um, a little bit extra now. It's getting a bit it's cool for you in the morning. Cool, yeah, well, it's about nine degrees when I left this morning, but you would have still been in bed, Heiko. Yeah, I know. As I said, I, I often would like to get up early with you and have a cup of coffee, but, you know, like 4.30, those. <laughs> are That's right. a bit, bit early. Of course, not only are you now a star of the radio, but you're on YouTube as well. Yeah, that's right. And, and look, I'm even you've wearing been, sort of Chinese themed shirts. You wore a good shirt for a change. Yeah. No, because my, my friend in Singapore has been watching. He says he said I should um, dress up like Stephen Seagal and I should grow a, a yeah. goatee and wear orange sunglasses. Why don't you uh, dye your hair black? It would look <laughs> a bit like him, actually. Anyway, here to, t- to talk about uh, something which is very, very common out there, Back pain. I, I know my wife suffered from back pain for over 30 years, and uh, you know she has it every single day, lives with it. But acupuncture for back back pain. Tell us about that. Well, yeah, back pain is, is I think, from an, an acupuncture clinic point of view here, and probably in most countries, the, world, the most common complaint that mm-hmm. I think people would come in for. And I think the statistic is something like 60% of people will have a back pain at some stage in their life and have three days off work or two weeks off work or, yep. you know, and it costs so many, you know, billions, you know, because because of the, the discomfort and people not going to work or not being able to work properly. So, yeah, so I thought we'd have a little bit of a, a talk about that. And uh, it's covered through ACC? Yeah, and I've got, I, again, yeah, if, if the back injury is as a result, um, if the back pain is as a result of an injury, yes, then it, it's covered by ACC. And as we know, there can be so many lifting a bag of concrete, pulling yeah. things in the boot. Just moving. Yeah, even, I mean, I've had patients that just twist it over backwards to pick up a paper clip and if their back yeah. suddenly can do it and then that's it, yeah, they can have, have time off with that. Now, of course, every week you say that acupuncture can help anything, yeah. but there are so many things out there. You used to treat the back, there's chiropractic, there's osteopathy, there's a massage, there's a hundreds of things, Swedish massage, Coney massage, whatever that is, yeah. uh, essential oil massage, physiotherapy, Pilates is all the rage. So what else are there, is there that you know of? Yeah, well, there, there's a lot. I mean, there's, there's also a, a, a technique called um, Feldenkrais, um, and there's... Um, Catherine Cutbush over in Havelock, who's using that, and very effectively, you know, there's other techniques, Bowen and Emmett kinesiology, uh, there's, there's different type of specialist exercises, you know, yoga, stretching techniques and whatever. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a lot out there. <clears throat> uh, all of those people who do all of those things, yeah. they're going to say that that is the cure or that's going to f- help fix the problem, but you're going to say acupuncture is the, uh, the way they should be going. Why acupuncture, not those things? Look, I don't want to say that acupuncture is, is, is the bees and all, but yeah, it, it, is, it is very effective and it's been it's used a lot and there's been a lot of um, different research programs for it. And um, So yeah, it, it's, it's definitely, of course, I'm biased yes, you know, towards it. And, <laughs> and, um, but you know, one comment that I will make is, is like our other therapies, you know, in particular like physiotherapy, have gone out and then, um, and then learnt a little bit of... Um, what's what's called dry needling, and um, it's a sort of a way to get it, getting around um, calling it acupuncture. Um, and I mean, it's a very very short course that, that teaches and how to do a little bit of like local yeah. needling. Um, but I think the in a, be it not dangerous in the hands of a trained professional who knows about anatomy and so forth. It, it's it's only just grasping the, the 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 edge of what acupuncture the true potential really is. Yeah. So how long are the co- courses on dry needling? Look, some of them are only a couple of hours, so um, you, you, you know you, you can say that you know you're not going to have the you know the full grasp of, of having a, a ten thousand hour acupuncture course. Mm. Um, so yeah, so in, in that regard, yeah, of course I'm, I'm I'm biased towards that. You know, particularly traditional acupuncture. Yeah. Um, you know, it can can offer so much more. Okay, so you're saying acupuncture is the best um, technique for pain relief. But what about if I just go and get some tremadol? Yeah, you know, 500 milligram terminals, that would make you feel good, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're obviously speaking from experience. <laughs> yes, there. I am. <laughs> That's why you're always quite happy and smiling here at, at 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah, I, I, again, it's, it's like um, these things are, are a band-aid. I, I don't think they really get to, to treat the cause and, and the, the, the root of the problem, mm-hmm. um, whereas I think acupuncture can so that you actually can have a treatment so that you don't need to keep taking um, yeah. Painkillers, um, you know, such as tremadol or panadol or yeah. whatever, 
And I think that that's the difference. The acupuncture actually can help to, to stimulate the body to repair itself, which the body will do innately anyway in most cases. Um, the reality is, is in, in most cases, you know, an acute back problem or any, any injury, the body will get better by itself. I mean, mm. you've, you've probably heard sure. that or maybe experienced it yourself. You know, you've hurt your arm yeah. and then it's, oh, what, what will I do? Will I do? You do nothing. You don't take any drugs. You don't even gym, But, you know, two weeks later, it's... It's better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I often find is that, you know, like uh, I think I've told you before, my frozen shoulder. Yeah. And I fell over not long ago and um, damaged a ligament in my shoulder. And it's, it's getting better. Yeah. And I suppose I could have gone to the doctors and got some sort of treatment or cortisone injection. But, you know, it just, like you say, it will get better. And, you know, I'm sort and of... In many of cases, yeah, it will. But then sometimes I think you do need, um, and it's useful to have extra treatment, such as with, with acupuncture or... Um, physical type therapies to, to, to move things, stimulate things to heal. The only times I've injured my back, it might be, you know, if I've twisted or lifted something really heavy, um, and sometimes it needs to be put back for want of a better word. So how does uh, acupuncture do its thing there? Yeah, so that's interesting. Like, like if you're, you know, you're lifting a, a bag of cement or something, and then, and then you've really, you've, the, the muscle's just been strained, and then it goes into a spasm, if mm. you like. And then when that muscle tightens up, then of course yeah, it, it, it's going to move the connections with, with the spine, but that, that'll squash the nerves, cause the pain. Um, so the acupuncture would it's it's not going to be able to sort of put the spine back into place. But what what we'll be working on is, is relaxing those muscles, mm. so that it'll allow the the body to get its correct posture again, get the circulation going, to put everything back into its 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 normal processes, what it normally would be doing. Now we mentioned uh, earlier that. Uh you know, you could just take tramadol or any other drug and it might dull that pain pretty well straight away. But however, the only time I've ever taken it was when I had uh, kidney stones. Mm -hmm. And look, I was, as soon as I took those pills, I was sick as a dog. All oh, right. So yeah. I said, okay, I'm not going to have any more of these. How were you sick? Of nausea? Sick. Nausea, yeah. yeah, yeah they yeah, just yeah. made me feel horrible. Yeah. So, and that was the side effect of that pill. Yeah. Now, the beauty of uh, acupuncture, of course, is that there isn't a side effect like that, is there? That's right, and, um, and, and and unfortunately, even a lot of the anti-inflammatories now, there's, um, you know, they, they're known that longer-term use is causing quite serious adverse effects. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, in an acute phase, yes, it, it may be appropriate that you can take something, but then I think once it becomes chronic, then um, and, and people are starting to, you know, to shy away from having to sort of take long-term, you know, pain relief medicine that um, has, has side effects. Yeah, exactly. What about uh, moxibustion, Heiko? Can you use that for it? Yeah, definitely moxibustion, as I mentioned um, in, in another show. You know, moxibustion you know, is the burning of a herb mugwort. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then you, you, you can hold the, 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 the moxa near the area. Yep. Um, there's different ways you can put it directly onto the skin. I mean, you don't let it burn down to the skin and burn a hole in the skin, but it gets that heat. And um, I think... You know, the, the view is, is that somehow the essential oils or the property of that herb gets into the acupuncture points, into those meridians, helps there. Um, you can put it on the end of the needle so it's more targeted to go deep into, into the point. Yep. Um, promotes circulation and stops pain. Is it one of these instances where, you know, we often talk about acupuncture, I've got a pain in my head, you put the needle in my toe. Uh, but if I've got a back pain, you put the needle in my back, or is it one of those cases that goes in my foot or somewhere else? It, it, it's both. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's certainly, you, you do, do local work. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a bit like, you know, you've hurt your elbow. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, you naturally, you, you want to rub it, mm -hmm. you know, to get the warmth, get the circulation there to go there. Yeah, we will do acupuncture there, like on the back or in the muscles of the lower back. Um, but also we have a look at where the meridians or the energy lines flow. Um, and commonly the ones for back pain is actually with uh, using the bladder meridian because the bladder meridian runs like up the side of the spine, um, goes right up where, where those, those muscles often get, get very, very tense. Yep. And, and those bladder points are down in the, um, in the feet com commonly. Um, we have other points that we might use in the, in the, in the wrist or in, in, in the, the side of the palm. Um, there's, there's a number of what we call distal points or points away from the problem. Even a point here we use um, sometimes for a serious acute pain. It's, it's, it's just here, um, wow. sort of between the nose and the lips. Really? So, um, Don't they call it a septum? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> now, we've been talking uh, so far about injuries that might be caused by lifting or sports, whatever, but what about when someone gets as old as you, Hike? I mean, you start just wearing out. Yeah, and, and that's you get, right. And yeah. you get pain. Yeah. Can you treat that wear and tear or not? Yeah, and I said, like, if, if you have a look at an X-ray from my back, you know, you'll, you'll in the lower back as, as well as, you know, probably most people over 40 that there starts to be, there is some level of deterioration. Yeah. Um, the discs can start to wear out, um, you know, arthritic changes in the bone structure and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, that can cause aches and pains, stiffness and, and you know, limited range of movement. Um, that in combination with, you know, general unfitness and um, other problems with, with organs not circulating, you know, blood and so forth, um, g gives you aches and pains. And so, yeah, acupuncture can, can be useful for that. Of course, it, it's, it's not going to, you know, reverse the, you know, the ageing process per se, but um, we look at it like um, we say the kidneys control the bones, so then we might use um, kidney acupuncture meridian points to influence strength in the bones, which then helps for the, you know, for yep, the pain. Sure. Now, of course, a lot of people out there, Heiko, they look upon this alternative medicine that you're talking about right now yeah. as voodoo. I mean, voodoo, have, yep. Yeah. Have you done any research which actually says that, hey, this does work, or are you just telling us it works? Yeah, I, mean, I personally haven't done, right. done research like in, in a unit here, but um, there have been, been numerous studies on acupuncture and back pain because it, it seems to be sort of po probably the most commonest one because it's such a common sure. problem. Um, and there's studies that that um, have used moxibustion, um, there's studies where they, they compare pretend acupuncture with real acupuncture, they have, they've done study where they have acupuncture from acupuncturists, and then they've had acupuncturist uh, studies with non-acupuncturists yeah. doing it. <laughs> um, there's, there's studies in, involving combination with, with medicine and drugs, um, there's studies being done with um, acupuncture and, and manual therapies, comparing it, so yeah, there, there's there's numerous studies that that, that have been done on it. Uh, this is in China and in, and in the West, you know. Yep, so, and it came out good. And um, so I mean that's why I mean I, I think you know we are covered with ACC, yeah, sure. um, insurance companies in the states and Canada, um, and it's it's and I think it's 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 becoming more and more of a well, I guess know, a, a mainstream. Yeah as opposed to an alternative. That's the know? proof of the pudding, isn't it? If the government is prepared to pay for it, they must have faith mm. in it as well. Well, I think the real proof of the pudding, though, is the patients are voting mm. with their feet to come in yeah. and not worrying about what some little paragraph in the, you know, the British Medical Journal may have said or whether it's good, bad, or it's 30% it's, it's OK or whatever the figure is that they have. Pe people are just choosing to do it and yeah, I think sure. that's the real proof in the pudding too right now I ask her this every time but and uh, let's go back to the how, drugs you're gonna ask me how long is a yeah, piece of string how long is a piece of string I, go, <laughs> I take a drug I'm pretty well yeah. going to be feeling a whole lot better yeah. very shortly yeah. if I come and see for the acupuncture or the moxibustion how soon before I start feeling better uh, and look again just just that saying where you say people pay for the drugs and they feel a whole better I mean I mean no, I'm getting many patients that just just coming because the drugs are not working yeah you know, if in fact they're making me feel worse in a different way, but it's not actually helping what it's supposed to be helping. Um, and and again with the acupuncture, I mean, there are incidences where I can treat people, and then and, and you know, um, and many times they get off the table and they're feeling mm. like, wow, I can feel that. They can press on it. That feels feels a lot better. Uh, again, you, you're looking at it. Is it just something you've just hurt your back this morning because you've been running? Um, or is it because you know twenty years ago you lifted a bag of concrete and you, you know you've really come right, yeah. torn some tendons and yeah. ligaments or something? So yeah, um, it, it, I wish I could say it's 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 three treatments or it's twenty three or it's twelve. Yeah, you can't um, do that though. But a, as a general rule, I mean ACC here in the in New Zealand, um, the insurance company, they'll cover you for at least sixteen treatments. So that gives wow, you give, gives you an yeah. idea. That you know, they're not expecting a miraculous cure in one or two sessions, but you know, it's it's you know, sixteen treatments over a couple of months, a couple of times a week, um, it would probably be a a, a reasonable guideline of, of what to do. Now, some long time ago, we spoke on this program about cupping. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a heat generated thing, a bit like moxibustin, isn't it? And uh, it almost looks like something that might belong in a an S and M dungeon. Yeah, that's is, right. Is, yeah. That any, is that any good for us? <laughs> it is. It's, it's it's very good. And you do and, that. And oh yeah. And um, 
it, it's actually quite a simple process. You basically have like a, a, a specific type of glass cup, not just an ordinary mm. glass per se, although you can use them if you have to, but you, you have to exercise a bit of caution with them. Um, and you basically create a flame um, with some cotton wool and some alcohol on some forceps. You put that into the cup, that creates a vacuum. You put the cup on and then the vacuum then sucks up the skin per se and then with that it, it, it can give you a little bit of a purplish colour mm -hmm. because it's we say it's bringing up the, the deeper down bad blood circulation to get the, the, the circulation underneath the injury moving better. And generally if, if the injury is quite severe or chronic, the, the more purple that the mark comes up, the more serious or chronic the injury is. That actually looks quite painful, uh, the end it, result. It, is it, it painful to do? It's, it's not actually painful when it's on. It just it feels weird. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, my patients say, look, it feels like it's an octopus like, grabbing hold of yeah. me or something like that. Um, but it's, 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 I mean, just recently, I mean, uh, I had a, um, you know, a young athlete. I think she was 15 or 16, um, and she was like a little bit, bit apprehensive and worried about it, but yeah, she, she, she thought it was really cool, it wasn't, wasn't painful, yeah. she was All right. putting the pictures up on Facebook, and, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, and you probably saw that, that, that swimmer yes, um, from that the Olympics, right. yeah. yeah, so he, he, he's helped to sort of promote the, um, you know, the benefits of it. Yeah, it must be great when someone does that. Yeah, I mean, it's because it's, it's like, and, and it, it is actually interesting how that once that happened, then people actually it's started an endorsement asking, for you, and, isn't it? And then they saw the cups there on my show. Oh, oh, do you do that yeah. too? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, 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 it's good. Now, if we want to find out a bit more about what you do, uh, we can visit your website, can't we? We can, yep. And um, the shortened form of the website is, is acu123.co.nz. But um, I will put my website and um, some other links about back pain um, in the comment section yep. in the, um, underneath the YouTube mm -hmm. um, when that gets up there. And what are we going to talk about next week? Yeah, next week we, we're going to be talking with a, um, a, a Sydney-based practitioner, um, Tanya, and, and she specialises and treats a lot of um, women's problems, menstrual problems. Mm -hmm. um, but we're just going to try to speak more specifically about um, acupuncture and Chinese herbs in its role in treating menopause. Great. Uh, always something different on the acupuncture program. That's it, yep. Okay, now we normally end with a song, and today is no exception. What is the song going to be? Yeah, and today we're, we're going to finish off with, um, I think I'll be, I'll be in the good books with you. It'll be the, um, the Beatles song, um, She's So Heavy. And, um, and one of the reasons I, I like this song, um, because I think it's the very, very last song that the four of them were together in the studio. It was sort of yeah. like the final, final bit, if you like. And I would say, arguably, the greatest album of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Regardless of what sort of music I like, but you know, that's just my opinion. And uh, that song written by, in the main by John Lennon, and it's all about his love for Yoko yep, Ono. Yep, It's bluesy sound too. Yep, and um, it's an amazing song, and it's, it's nice and long to finish off the show. That's right. <laughs> Good on you, Heiko. <laughs> As always, a pleasure. Look after yourself. Talk to the same time, same place next week. Okay, cheers.